Alrighty, yo, what is going on, everybody? It's your boy, Mr. DDG94, back with another reaction video. Today, we're going to react to was SmackDown vs. Raw 2006 the best wrestling video game? Was it or was it not? I say it's, I say it's, it's, it's between 2000, 2006, 2007. I would say it's between those two, me personally. I would say it's between those two. But I also got to throw in uh, SmackDown vs. Raw 2011 as well. I got to throw that one in there as well because I feel like those three stand. I feel like those three stand above all other wrestling games that ever came out. I know some people going to say, here come the pain. All right. I know some people going to say, no mercy or one of them old games that was on the uh, Nintendo 64. All right. But when we talking about games that actually uh, progress the wrestling game genre and push the envelope and, and push push these games forward, is there's only a few, there's only, I feel like those are the I feel like there's only three that did it and that was SmackDown versus Raw two thousand and six seven and two thousand and two thousand eleven which was the last uh, SmackDown versus Raw. I think those were the ones that pushed the envelope because 2K has done nothing with this uh, franchise. They've done nothing innovative. They've done nothing to make the WWE games fun or creative, you know, to just create all this destruction and chaos in a ring with your favorite wrestlers like you could with the THQ games, which is why I say the THQ games are better than the 2K games. And I think that's the main reason why the 2K games don't get no love. And they never should get any love because they're ass. Um, but anyway, so without further ado, we're going to get right into this. WWE SmackDown vs. Raw 2006. Was it the best? Let's check it out. Was it? Like I said, it's, it's in the top three for me. 2004 was yet another successful year for video game titles. Dragon Quest 8, PES 4, Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green, NFL 2K5, NFL Street, Spider-Man 2, Halo 2, MVP Baseball 2004, Tony Hawk Underground 2, Need for Speed Underground 2, Damn. Death Jam 5 for New York, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, and of course, WWE SmackDown vs. Raw. SmackDown vs. Raw promised to be a groundbreaking title that would alter the course of the SmackDown series, and in some ways, that's true. It changed the course of the series, however, the hype for the game was far too ambitious for it to actually follow up on. SmackDown Here Comes a Pain was an iconic title, a title that's widely lauded as the greatest wrestling game of all time. Bullshit. SmackDown vs. Raw, though, took away several features from the game and in turn took a more realistic approach which allowed for you to replicate the real-life WWE, including heal and phase meters, test of strength, and a lot of great features. Ironically, transitioning into a more realistic game only caused THQ to take one step forward and two steps back, because it didn't hit the same as Here Comes the Paint. It was like it's little brother. The roster was lighter, backstage areas weren't connected as they were in previous titles, and the gameplay itself feels like Here Comes the Pain, but without the great parts. It lacked that charm. That said, SmackDown vs. Raw is one of my favorite games in the entire series, and also the underwhelming nature of the game forced THQ to step up and deliver an even greater product that is the distinctive element about it. 2005. 2005 was a very significant year in the history of gaming. The PSP officially launched in North America and Europe, Xbox 360 was announced and released in November, and for the PS2, the console was slowly going out on a high. Fan speculation was running rampant in anticipation for the next SmackDown title. Many thought it would continue with the Here Comes the Pain-esque titles, you know, SmackDown World Life, SmackDown is True, SmackDown Time to Play the Game, which... <laughs> Hell Some people no. actually thought it was going to be the title. Some wanted an improved cost system and additional matches such as the Buried Alive match. And when looking at IGN's requests to make the game as good as possible, they followed up on almost every one of them. The general manager mode one caught my eye. THQ most definitely followed up when looking at the fans' request, and they were on a mission to make the SmackDown title a successful one. SmackDown vs. Raw 2006 was officially revealed to be the name in July 2005 after months of silence from THQ. As opposed to previous years where information would be pouring, they were mostly quiet this time around, preferring to move in silence. The developers confirmed that the series was headed in a more sports style from the name itself, which was inspired by Madden, FIFA, NBA, all that to the gameplay itself, but also assured fans that it would retain the same vibe from previous games. An important factor in changing up the gameplay was for the last couple of years, the game was the same. Of course, the last three were different in their own ways, but SVR 2006 clearly didn't have that style about it. One huge announcement about the game was that it was expanded to the PSP. This was the first game in the SmackDown series to be on multiple consoles, and SVR 2006 was seen as a redemption to turn things around after a somewhat underwhelming year. Presentation was once again improved tremendously. SmackDown vs. Raw worked on this well, but SVR 2006 uh, took it to the next level and provided a more authentic product. Hey, 
when we talking about presentation, we got to talk about that goddamn commercial. I think y'all know where we going with this. Hold on real quick. SmackDown versus Raw. The SmackDown versus Raw uh, trailer, bro. That fucking commercial, bro. Piss me the fuck off, bro, when I saw that shit. Bro, what the fuck? Hate when you gotta refresh these pages, dog. Always gotta refresh these fucking pages. Uh, let's see here, let's see here. This shit right here, bro. We got we got we got we got to go go through it, bro. This right here, if you had to be around during this time to understand why this shit piss I don't know why this damn thing is acting up now. It want to act up now. Here it go. Bro. This has gone too far. Hey, angle, no, Kurt, no. Was this all seven? I could have swore this was the 06 trailer. I, I, I don't think this was 07, bro. I don't remember this being 07's trailer. What's this man doing? Yeah, this got to be 06 because. Uh, John didn't have black the black attire. Oh my! Cena just put angle in the crowd. Somebody's gonna get hurt. What a dirty move! Cena is nothing but a thug. Now both of them are in the crowd. Whoa! Check this out, Cole. What's Angle doing? Whatever he's looking for, he better hurry up. <laughs> That shit was a teaser, bro. And I hated that commercial to this fucking day. Because the game looked nothing like it. It's good presentation-wise. It's good for a PlayStation 2 game. The presentation in uh, 2006 was pretty solid for a PlayStation 2 game or, X or OG Xbox game. But when we talking about that commercial, though, bro. I mean, it, it was it as bad as the intro to uh, Just Bring It? No, the the intro to Just Bring It is the worst because that's in game. This is just a trailer hype up. So yeah, bro, it, it pissed me off, bro. That felt more in line with actual WWE. The entrances were complete as opposed to the 22nd entrances and Here Comes the Pain in the previous game. The motion captures were much tighter and realistic, which of course led to better entrances. Post-match sequences were back after they were left out in SmackDown vs. Raw. The sequences were much better and fresh. And that's the thing about this game. There was a lot of major changes, but when you add up all the minor stuff, it really makes it one of the best wrestling games. The commentary was slightly improved, although I doubted anyone really enjoys hearing Tez and Michael Cole say the same stuff. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Nothing costs you a match quicker than overconfidence. I don't think I've ever felt more anticipation during the match than I am right now, JR. The graphics were significantly improved, much better than the jump from SmackDown Shut Your Mouth to Here Comes the Pain. It was a complete change. The character were more fleshed out, plus Randy Orton didn't look like some random unknown like previously. John Cena looked much better. The Undertaker was still as good as he was previously. Kurt Angle, even some of the mid-carders like Carlito and Orlando Jordan looked great. Overall, SmackDown vs. Raw 2006 eclipses the efforts made with the previous game in graphics. It's a huge difference, and it really makes this a standout title.
again, I told you guys, it brought everything that the previous titles did and did it better while having its own flavor about things in terms of gameplay and stuff like that. The right. gameplay of SCR 2006 takes an entirely different route when compared to the previous arcade fast-paced titles. While that influence was still around, this game was about carving its own path and heading towards a more realistic approach. The action was slower and more in line with an actual wrestling match, the controls took a slight change along for more complex grapples, and the previous games were more simple with it giving everybody the same animation and moves. You press circle and the left d-pad it gives you the same grapples here it's more complex you could do a lot more things with grappling you can customize it to your liking making each wrestler even more distinctive when compared to previous titles and these changes were definitely noticeable it helped make the game better irish whoop was now triangle and circle instead of just a circle and i hated this change as a kid i always preferred the previous and later games style and depending on the wrestler there was a power irish whip option other than that the controls are made the same reverses for some reason feel much harder to do here the whole gameplay yeah, was transformed yeah. and it was one of the biggest jumps the series had seen up to this point the one thing I hated was the reversal system. That shit was terrible in this game. I hated the reversal system. The one in uh, SmackDown versus Raw, the first one was pretty solid. The one in 07 was pretty solid. 08 was so it. The reversal system was always solid. It was just this one where it was terrible, bro. Because you could hit it at the right. You had to hit it at the precise time, bro. And some animations, bro, were st some animations were so fucking fast that you would fuck around and hit it and it wouldn't respond, bro. And you'd be like, damn, dog. And then, you know, the computer like to spam fucking moves and shit. So you just be fucking pissed. Matches lasted longer, the submission style was by far the best in the series, making submission matches more interesting. Rest holds were much more important, and every once in a while could lead to you scoring the win. This was never seen before in the games. It made matches more engaging and unpredictable. And speaking of unpredictable, there was random possum pins that could catch you off guard and make you lose a match. And the biggest addition to the gameplay, the one that was most noticeable, was stamina. The series was heading towards a more realistic style, so stamina was eventually going to happen. As time went on, I turned that shit stamina off. was drained to make things tougher. Sometimes I turned you that a shit finisher off. and be exhausted, so you can't really capitalize on it. And it made games much more strategic. You can't be going for several strikes of the same moves. You had to change it up and try and maintain your stamina. I hated it as a kid. I was turned off this feature because I wanted to just mess around. Yeah. It was so annoying. In addition, there was plenty of small things included with this game. Stealing tons, more grappling options. You could lose by count out, by getting knocked out. And you couldn't just spam moves because your meter will go down and in turn you can't hit a finisher. It made you go for different moves in an effort to boost your meter. And with all of this added up, the gameplay of SCR 2006 ranks amongst the very best. Is there problems? Yeah, I hate going to the top rope because most likely you won't connect with the move, but these problems aren't a big deal. SmackDown vs Raw 2006 laid the foundation for 2007 to implement the grappling system and many other features. It was a great game, great gameplay, one of the very best in the entire series. I played it once again for this video and matches were interesting. A lot of them lasted over 10 minutes, which is nice. I really love that. I enjoyed that. The AI was challenging for some reason and I loved it. Online was slightly improved from the previous game, but you won't hear much from me about it. Okay, SmackDown vs Raw lacked the proper identity about it. Here, that was not a problem. The game was more realistic, but had a little of that previous SmackDown game's feel to it. And this is done in a right way. Last year, SVR, the original SmackDown vs Raw, didn't have the proper balance about it. That's the problem with the game, you know, it lacked a good, strong identity. Matches saw some additions, backstage brawl was a bit better and more interactive, it didn't feel the same way in SmackDown vs Raw, and I had more fun with the barroom brawl, backstage and parking lot brawls than I did with the previous game. The steel cage match was more strategic, you had to choose the right moment to climb and time it right, and it was a significant improvement, and 2007 eventually brought a way for you to escape from the door as well. Titles could be defended again, which was very great, and it's almost strange why they never included this feature in the previous games. It took them five years to bring it back from SmackDown Know Your Role. Other than that, Fulfill Your Fantasy replaced Bra and Panties. This was strange, I almost can't believe they had these in wrestling games, but bro, you wouldn't catch me dead playing this because, well, you know, someone's gonna open that door be seeing me throw pillows on freaking Stacey Keeler or something. Yo, what the hell are you doing? I ain't trying to risk that. It was pretty limited compared to Bra and Panties. Raw Rumble was still as tough as the previous year, but the biggest inclusion was the Buried Alive match. THQ had read up on what the fans wanted and were so desperate to make everything come to fruition. This was an interesting match that stood out the series hadn't seen in a while and only made this game better. There was just more versatility with SCR 2006. You can defend titles, Buried Alive, better submission matches, steel cage matches, and it's hard to add more matches because of how every kind of match works, but they did a good job here. They even fixed matches such as the hardcore match. The creation suite for SmackDown vs Raw 2006 underwent a somewhat major overhaul. Create a wrestler was much more detailed and provided better options as it relates to creating a wrestler. The character models were way better than the previous games, and even though they weren't in line with the actual roster, the upgrade was very noticeable. There was names for the announcers to announce, signs from the crowd. It's one of the biggest upgrades in a wrestling game when it comes to create a wrestler. Nice. More authentic, more clothing options, and overall it was yet another option improved. SCR 2006 on almost every area was better than the previous game. Create a championship is another. 
more options. Some of the belts on TV were brought in as well, but the biggest changes to the creation suite are create a stable and create an entrance. Once again, much better. Why? You had more entrance options for tag teams. You could have the announcers call them by a name, attributes, which I believe wasn't in the previous game. I'm not sure. Tag teams were more authentic. However, it would take a couple of years for them to see major improvements. About three more years. Create an entrance though, even better. You had the option to have pyro in your entrance, change the lighting, every part of the entrance from walking out to the ramp to the ring. You can give the wrestler a different type of animation and entrance for each one. Nowadays, this feature is normal, but back then, this was a big deal and only did more to make the title a standout one in the series. But there's more. Locker rooms. A locker room was filled with accolades, trophies, and you could customize it. Yeah. This alone makes 06 and 07 very unique. You can have posters, banners, rewards from WWE Shop, and it's not going to make the game amazing, but it's a nice little thing. Trophies made you feel a sense of accomplishment when you won one as a kid. I thought it was a big deal to get all of them, not to mention the titles as well. You know, you had to unlock a lot of the titles. Shop Zone had more unlockables compared to the previous years, and you once again had the Divas loading screen, except this time you could turn on the ones you like most in the locker room. SmackDown vs. Ross Austin 6 was filled with small content. I do think it was dumb to have Jake the Snake be a PSP unlockable. It was unnecessary, but the good outweighs the bad. The roster for this game was much more interesting than the previous one. You had all the big names expected, but there was a couple of mid-card standouts, such as Chris Masters, Snitsky, Mohamed Hassan, and Paul London. The return of Stone Cold, Hulk Hogan, Ted DiBiase, and The Rock to the roster, British Bulldog, Jake Roberts, and Andre the Giant made their SmackDown debuts, over 20 new additions, and there was a few alternate attires as well. JBL, John Cena, Carlito, and Triple H had a second attire, I think Stone Cold as well. The attires were from early 2005 for the most part. It represented that time period around WrestleMania 21, as evident by Rey Mysterio, Eddie Guerrero, and Kurt Angle's attires. Batista's was very outdated, which is kind of strange, but it is what it is. Other than that, there was a lot of omissions. Matt Morgan, Maven, Eminem, Luther Reigns, Viscera. The women's roster in general was missing a lot of names such as Victoria, but what's yeah. funny about some of those names is that some of them were originally included in the game. There's a bunch of files in the beta that show Kenzo, Suzuki, Maven, and Luther Reigns were supposed to be in the game. The roster is probably prepared around WrestleMania time, yet they still removed a couple of these names. Mark Gingerek remained despite being released on the same day as Maven, and even though there were some omissions here, SDR Sauce and 7 would have a lot more omissions to it. The arenas were graphically an improvement over the previous game. Lighting was better. You had every arena from Vengeance 2004 to ECW One I Stand 2005 in the game, and it had been a while since the series seen a major game mode included. There was challenge mode and pay-per-view mode, and those are good, but GM mode was one of the most memorable. The Madden and 2K series had a franchise mode of sorts that saw you lead an NFL or NBA team to glory. THQ had made a WWE version of that and called it GM mode. You had the choice to make matches and book shows to compete with the other one. You're given money or the option to pre-draft. Either way, you have to put on a show that stands out. It was and still is challenging because you can't just book TLC matches every week. The wrestlers get injured and there's a lot of problems. Sometimes their morale would drop and you have to turn things around. And this version of GM mode was somewhat limited because it was the first year. 2007 and 2008 were way better and more detailed. But for this one, there's a lot of enjoyment trying to put on the best show possible. It's still tough for me. I can't win this thing to save my life. I have to add another controller to beat the other show because I'm very incapable of actually putting on a good show. Great. GM mode was great. And I do think it took a very long time for 2K to actually implement it in their games. Very, very long. I think it would have been better if they brought it back for 2K14 and stuff like that. It would have been great. But that's not the point. 2007 would see improvements. 08 was even better. But the roster was life for that one. So yeah. The soundtrack was once again a mix of alternative music and hip-hop. Best combo for a wrestling game. That's facts. The rap songs were, I believe, made specifically for the game. Because you'd hear many references to the wrestlers in just about every song. They mentioned SmackDown vs. Raw. Bumpy Knuckles would be like, I put the battery in John Cena made him a beast. I like quoting stuff, but that's what they were saying. But the developers really know how to create a soundtrack because a lot of these songs still stick out to me when playing the game. The best song for me was probably Pieces. That's the most nostalgic to come from the game. You discover a lot of songs from these games that you usually wouldn't. Like, if they had the budget, you'd probably hear some random song from that time period, like Hustler's Ambition from 50 Cent. But I'm glad that isn't the case because then most of the songs in the soundtrack would already be known to you and would take away some of the magic of the soundtrack. Still would have taken it, though. That song hitting while you were making a match, it would have been some nice stuff. With that said, we gotta talk about season mode. SmackDown vs. Raw's transition into including voiceovers was bound to happen. Voiceovers changed the series dramatically and alter the course of season mode. Stories weren't branched out as often as they once were, and 2006 was more of the same, except this time I thought they were less ambitious than the original SmackDown vs. Raw. I can't believe I'm saying it, but the previous game's season mode in my opinion was better because even though there was voiceovers and less storylines than Here Comes the Pain, it retained the same vibe. 2006 didn't have that many storylines and remained a lot more grounded than SmackDown vs. Raw. You start off on Raw potentially feuding with Evolution, Shelton Benjamin's an ally by your side, there's a Legends Tour story which was fresh, and in the previous games they didn't involve the Legends at all. Stone Cold has a bobblehead though. Shelton Benjamin's getting screwed over even in the video games. Poor guy can't have nothing. Cut the music. The next time you try to cheat and switch rumble entry numbers, make sure you're not doing it in front of a hidden security camera. He cheated? Eric Bischoff fails to bring back WCW, and the stories on SmackDown were way better. You try and get Tory Wilson's managerial services, Eddie Guerrero steals the Undertaker's urn and tries to control him, and this one is kinda sad because Eddie passed away the same week this game came out, and Undertaker's choke slamming him into a casket. Teddy Long getting run over is the big story that doesn't seem to have a big ending, I believe. Yeah, yeah, the SmackDown, the SmackDown, uh, the SmackDown season mode uh, better, and the path that you have to take in order 
to get the fucking ECW storyline. I'm telling you, bro. Just to get the ECW storyline versus the regular storyline that they give you, you gotta lose. You gotta lose a storyline here. I think you had to lose the Undertaker Eddie Guerrero storyline. Then you had to. Then you had to win. You had to win in a certain type of way with certain matches. Just so Rob Van Dam could come out the dub the uh come out as the WWE champion or world heavyweight champion with whatever championship he has on on him. You have to make sure that Rob Van Dam comes out the champion by the Royal Rumble. If Rob Van Dam don't come out as the champion by the Royal Rumble, you didn't you didn't do everything the way you were supposed to. If it was RVD, they made it seem like the guy, the main character that you're playing with ran him over. The most interesting one, though, is definitely RVD bringing back ECW. It was different, creative, and speaking of creative, a lot of the stories were too serious. That said, it was very fun to go back and do season mode. It's a good one. I'm not going to say it's a bad one before you get pressing me on the comments. Nah, 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 nah. No, it's a good-ass season mode. It's just the wild ones in the previous years were way better. I prefer 2007s a lot because it had some of those wild video game storylines. But this was good. The voiceovers are way better than the previous year, and you're awarded with a lot of unlockables if you beat season mode. You have the world title you can defend, the WWE Championship if you win season mode, and they gave you a lot of reasons to play. If you see this as THQ trying to make the storylines more like real-life WWE, they succeeded by a lot. I think it was the beginning of something, but they gave up after 2007. You know, the season modes after that weren't good. Overall, SmackDown vs. Raw 2006 was jam-packed with content. The PSP version had some mini games that were fun as well, and going back to the game, I found a lot of enjoyment in it. It was nostalgic to go back and play this game because I spent a lot of time on it as a kid. I played the PSP version first before eventually getting the PS2 one, and countless hours spent on this game. They showed respect to the legends in a way that WWE games never have, even had the WrestleMania 9 arena, which was cool with the classic steel cage, better graphics, a star-studded roster, and if THQ was out to redeem themselves, they did it in a huge way. Even the PSP version of the game, which had the downgraded graphics, was good. SmackDown vs. Raw 2006 remains the ultimate wrestling game, an addicting game gameplay coupled with multiple game modes to keep you busy. There's no way I can call this game overrated. I enjoyed it then multiple times. I traded in True Crime New York City for this game once because playing it before, I knew it wouldn't disappoint me. And it didn't. I played this game for four straight months despite owning three copies of it in the past. There was a lot that was special with SmackDown vs. Raw 2006, one of the best wrestling games of all time, and I understood why people prefer 2006 to 2007 even though they're very similar. It's because 06 had a personality about it when dealing with the simulation style, and that style doesn't take itself too seriously like the 2K games. It's very important, but they allowed you to enjoy what made the SmackDown games in the past special so yeah all right what you guys say with smackdown versus rocks awesome six please comment down below and that's the first video make sure you hit the f you on the like button and perhaps the batista bomb on the subscribe button peace I'm out. so yeah man that's just gonna about do it for this one man um smackdown versus raw 2006 <clears throat> in my personal opinion like i said it's top three i will put it at number i, I would i would put it at number three it has a strong case for number two um even has a case for number one but in my personal opinion i would i would say 2006 is is top three like i said smackdown versus raw 2011 and 2007 are just they they innovate they they this is this is when thq was in control of the wwe games and they were very innovative like they had that they did have they fall off 2008 2009 they picked it up in 2010, then 2011, they went full fucking throttle, and then 12, they just, they added little stuff here and there. By the time we got to 13, it was like, what the fuck? They just took their foot off the gas, but then, then again, we didn't realize that they was going out of business, so sucks there but anyways though that's just gonna about do it for this one let me know what y'all think down in the comment section below i'll get back to you till then peace out